Okay, today we're going to be talking about compound bows. There are many different bows on the market, but we're going to talk about compound bows specifically today. This video is going to be geared towards people who are just getting into archery or just getting into bow hunting or are interested in getting purchasing a bow and they don't know very much. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about get some good things to know before you go into the shop. Some things you're going to be asked when you get into the shop, so it'd be always good to have this information in the back of your mind. For when it comes up. The number one thing that you have to know that nobody else can tell you that you need to decide on your own is your budget. How much money are you willing to spend on archery itself? Because there's more to archery than just a bow. You have to think you're gonna need a bow, you're gonna need some arrows, you're gonna need a release, a quiver would be nice, to hold your arrows, you're going to need a target. There's a lot of different things that go along with the sport of archery that you're going to need to consider before you walk into that shop. That's going to take your money from you, not just the bow. So don't go out there and blow all your money on an expensive bow and then buy cheap accessories to put on it. Find out what your budget is, find something that fits in the budget, whether you're buying your accessories separately or you're buying a package bow or something that comes with everything. I mean, there's an upside and a downside to both. If you buy the package, generally, some of the accessories are gonna be a little bit on the cheaper end, but then you've got everything together. Whereas if you buy the accessories individually, you could buy whatever you want, spend as much money as you want, and buy some expensive stuff to go with your expensive bow. It all depends on what you're willing to spend. Another term you're gonna hear is draw length. Now your draw length the distance from the bow and the string as you pull the string back to your face. That is your draw length. As people at the store will probably ask you, do you know your draw length? That's what they're asking you. If you don't have to know that going in, they will figure that out for you, but it is something that you're going to, that one way or another, you're going to need to figure out. One way to do it is to take your wingspan, middle finger to middle finger, Divide that number by 2.5, that will be your draw length. My draw length personally is 30 inches, so I should be able to go from one bow company to the next and say I'm a 30 inch draw and there, but that bow should fit me. Now that's, in general terms, that's what should happen. It doesn't always happen that way. There are some manufacturers that are off here and there. It's a little bit of a difference. You know, I could be 30 inches with one and 29 and a half with another, or this or that, it, it could it could waver a little bit, but generally you're in that ballpark. Once you know your draw length, you're good. The other term to, to know is draw weight. Now the draw weight is going to be the amount of weight that you are pulling back with your bow. There's different bows that can are adjustable from, you know, some of these ready to hunt bow packages or the budget bows or the ones for kids or the beginner ones, the beginner package bows. They'll be adjustable from anywhere from 5 pounds, 70 pounds, or, or 20 pounds to 60 pounds, something like that, where you can adjust right on the bow, and you can grow, the bow can grow with you as you grow through the sport. As your draw length gets longer and you get stronger and the muscles in your back and everything else gets adjusted to what you're using them for, you will be able to pull back more and more weight. Uh, if you're buying this for kids, as they grow up, their draw length is going to increase. You can adjust them on most of these bows. They can be adjusted right on the bow. Um, they'll have a, a range 
whether it's the draw length or the draw weight of how far you can adjust. Another thing to consider before you go into the shop is identifying which eye is your dominant eye. It's not as straightforward and simple as you might think. I'm a right-handed person. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be right eye dominant. I, in fact, am right-handed, but I'm left eye dominant, which means any time that I pick up a bow, I'm shooting left-handed because my left eye is my strongest eye, my most dominant eye, and I have to line that up through the peep sight at the sight to shoot an accurate shot. If I was left eye dominant, right-handed, but still wanted to shoot right-handed, some people will force themselves to do that. They'll close an eye, they'll put a patch over the eye because they want to still remain right-handed. I'm telling you, as someone that's right-handed that shoots left, shooting a left-handed bow is not difficult and you will get used to it and it will become normal for you because of the fact that you are left eye dominant. Most people will be right-handed, right eye dominant, left-handed, left eye dominant, but there are some that mix in between. So you have to know what your eye dominance is. So a good way to figure out your eye dominance is to take your hands, form a triangle, find an object in the distance, and stare at it, and one at a time, close an eye. If you close your right eye, and your left eye is open, and the image that you're staring at is still in the middle of your triangle, then your left eye dominant. If you close your right eye, and the, your left eye is open, and the image is no longer in the center of your triangle, then you're going to be right eye dominant. So try that out. Go between the eyes. You'll know what I mean when the image sw will move from the center of your triangle. And you'll find out which eye is your dominant eye. Axle to axle length is the measurement between top axle to the bottom axle. This is a 34 inch axle to axle bow. This is great for people that are tall. Because as you pull back, the string angle that comes back to your face on a higher axle to axle bow will fit your face and be more comfortable. Whereas if I was shooting something that had a smaller axle to axle, such as this, this is a diamond prism. It's a great uh, starter bow. It's a great bow for kids. This is a, a short axle to axle. I draw this back on my face, it's going to be a lot tighter and not as comfortable for me. That's another thing to consider is axle to axle when you're, depending on your height and what feels comfortable for you. A lot of this is, per, is, is something that people aren't going to be able to help you with. You're just going to know what's comfortable when you pick it up and try it out. Brace height is another term you're going to hear. Now the brace height is the distance between the riser of the bow to the string. That's your brace height. From here to here, this distance here. This is a six inch brace height. That's considered a short brace height. So this bow will be faster than bows that have a longer brace height, like six and a half or seven inch brace height. They're also less forgiving. So if you make a small mistake in your grip, or your position on your face, the, the arrows are spending less time on this bow than they would on a longer uh, brace height bow. So it's got less time to correct. So this one is a seven inch brace height and it'll be more forgiving. So if you're for just starting out, try and look for something that's like a six and a half to seven inch brace height especially when you're getting started, I think that'll be a good fit for beginners. Now speed. A lot of people take speed into account. They want a fast bow. They think that that's the most important thing. For some people it is, some people it's not. Don't get caught up with the speed. A lot of times the bows are not going to get the speed that they're advertised at because to get that speed they're shooting an arrow that's 350 grains which is fairly light and it's going at that bow completely maxed out at its maximum poundage and at its longest draw length. So if you're a shorter draw length and you can't pull that much weight, you're never going to get that kind of a speed that's advertised. So don't go 
picking your bow based off of the speed. You can decide whether to go to a bow shop, go to a big box store, or to buy something used online. In my experience, the best place to go if you're going to buy archery equipment is to a bow shop. Go to a place that sells archery stuff and has people working there that know what they're talking about. I can't comment on the big box stores because I haven't bought a bow there before. I know that there's probably some great people working there and some, probably some pretty knowledgeable people. But with big box stores you get a lot of turnaround. You might get some people in the department who aren't very knowledgeable but they need someone working in the archery department today. So you may not get the same level of service as if you found a bow shop specific place that was about archery, that had people there who know about archery, that do archery themselves, things of that nature. Be careful buying things online because even though you could be getting something for a deal, there could be a, an underlying problem with it that you might not see and it could be too late when it arrives. You know, I've heard stories of people buying bows online and they don't realize it but there's a small hairline crack in the limb if you get any kind of a crack in the limb, your bow is done. You're, you would have to buy new limbs to replace the limbs because the weight of the bow is being held through the limb and through the cam and that's a lot of pressure and if there's any kind of malfunction in the, these pieces, they will break. You'll end up snapping, punching yourself in the face and possibly putting an arrow through your hand. So you always want to be careful that if you are buying used, you either know the person very well that you're buying it from or you have somebody who knows what they're doing inspect it before you purchase it. There's budget bows, there's package bows, there's middle of the line and then there's flagship bows. This is a diamond prism. It is a budget bow. This is a beginner bow for kids. It's great for youth. It's great for people just starting out. This bow weighs 3.2 pounds without anything on it. It's a 31 inch axle to axle. It is adjustable from 5 pounds to 55 pounds by adjusting the module at the top. It has an adjustable draw length of 18 inches up to 30 inches. So technically this could fit me. If I adjusted it to 30, I'm a 30 inch draw, I could pull this back fine. Now this is my son's bow. As you can see, it's fit for him. I wouldn't be shooting this myself. This does not fit me right now. But if I adjusted the modules at the top and put it to 30, this would reach my face. Okay. Great for kids, beginners, youth. This will grow with the archer as they grow up or grow through their, their sport. They're fantastic. They come all ready to go. They've got an arrow rest, this is a whisker biscuit arrow rest. They come with a three pin sight and it's got a quiver on it. This is a detachable quiver. You can shoot with or without your arrows on. This bow itself is around four to five hundred dollars depending on where you go in Canada. And like I said before it's got a 7 inch price height, so this is a great one. You can also loosen and tighten the limb bolts here. That will also adjust the weight. It also has a stabilizer at the front that it comes with. Next bow is the Diamond Infinite Edge Pro. This is a very popular bow. Again, great one for people just starting out. It is a package bow. It comes with all this equipment on it. It's also got a detachable quiver. 3 pin sight, stabilizer, it's got your whisker biscuit rest, and it's fully adjustable, like the prism. This bow is adjustable from 13 to 31 inch draw length. Its mass weight is 3.2 pounds, axle, axle length is going to be the same as the prism, 31 inches. It's got a 7 inch brace height, and it's adjustable weight from 5 pounds to 70 pounds. This is Incredible adjustment in this bow. Again, great for kids, 
great for people that are just starting out that don't know if they really like the sport yet or not, but they want to get into it. You're not spending thousands of dollars shooting it twice and putting it away. Again, this is going to be around the three, the $400 to $500 range. Then there's the middle of the road bow, which is going to cost anywhere between, I'd say $700 to $1,000. It's going to generally be a bow that doesn't come with any accessories. It's just going to be a bare bow on its own. And you'll have to buy the accessories separately. After that is what's called a flagship bow. Every company puts out a flagship bow. It's their top of the line model. It's their best offering of the year. Every year a new flagship bow comes out and it's generally slightly different than the year before. Sometimes companies will come out and make a massive change to their setup altogether, but generally they're small increment changes year after year. This is a Hoyt Helix Ultra. It was the flagship bow for 2019. This bow, without any accessories on it, was $1,500. This is still a fantastic bow. I could shoot this for year after year after year for years to come and never need to upgrade. I bought some uh, a quiver that was separately, a stabilizer that was separate, I bought a sight, five pin sight, and an arrow rest. So again, if you're going this route, it's going to get expensive. You're going to spend a lot of money for a flagship bow, you want to put some decent equipment on it so that you get good results. This again is also adjustable, but not to the point, not to the same degree as um, the previous bows I was showing you. For this, these limbs are a 55 to 65 pound limb. So you can adjust this from 55 pounds up to 65. If it's fully maxed out at 65 pounds, it won't go any higher or it won't go any lower than 55. So you have to know fairly well where you're sitting in terms of draw weight because you're not going to be able to go lower than that. For your uh, draw length, these cams are adjustable. Now at this point in time in 2019, uh, the cams that Hoyt was putting out, there was a number, I believe there was a number one cam and a number two cam. You had to just Make sure you knew what your draw length was because you could only adjust it by a few inches here and there. So that's a flagship right there. This is the Prime Nexus 4. This was the flagship bow for 2021. It is has an adjustable cam as well for the draw length. This came bare bow as well. This was around $1,600 and then on top of that I've got a tight spot quiver. I've got a black gold rush five pin sight and I've got a fuse stabilizer. So you're looking at $100 for the stabilizer, it's about $150 to $200 for the sight and about $150 to $200 for the quiver. So it all can add up and then of course the rest is about $100 as well. Also again going back to budget make sure you know how much money you're willing to spend before you get into this. After you get your bow and your accessories, you're gonna need a release. Generally, when you start out, you'll get fitted for a wrist release. This particular one is a True Fire Smoke release. There's various different manufacturers. Um, they range anywhere from like $40 up to $200, I think. All depends on what you want. The nice thing about a wrist release is that it's secured to your hand, to your wrist. You don't have to worry about it coming off. Okay? There are other forms of releases. There's uh, thumb button releases. There's um, hinge releases. There's all different kinds, different rabbit holes to go down. So you will need a release to go with your bow. And you're also going to need a set of arrows. If you don't know anything about arrows or what kind of weight you want, that can always come. You can learn more about it as you go. Just pick up a set of arrows, depending on your draw length and your draw weight will depend on what type of arrow and what uh, length of arrow and what weight of arrow you should be shooting for your bow. So your shop can help you set up for that. And as you go through the sport, uh, you may change things up. 
that's perfectly normal. Tinkering is good. Tinkering is fun. I do it all the time. So hopefully that helps you. Hopefully those are some things to think about before you go into a shop and try and buy a bow. It's nice to know some terminology before you go in there. Try and find a shop that's knowledgeable with people in it that know what they're talking about. If you can get recommendations from people, by all means. If you live in Ontario and you want some recommendations from me, feel free to email me. I'll, I'll help you out as much as I can. So yeah, keep tinkering. Love the sport. Get into it. Shoot as much as you can. Practice, practice, practice. Don't let anybody persuade you into buying something that you don't want to buy. Know your budget. Buy within your means. And shoot as often as you can. You're going to love it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share them with your friends and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you.